Hello, everybody. So, welcome to the Ashenu stream. Um, I can't see myself yet on the stream, so you'll have to let me know in about five seconds if everything sounds good. Um, let me close my door back here. And we are going to, we are ready to go. Yeah, so today, um, oh yeah, I'll introduce myself. So I'm, my name is Jacob Leakley. I'm echoing. Uh, how's that happening? I bet you, uh, no, that's not why. Why would I be echoing? Um. Let's see. Yeah, turn off the volume. My, my volume on Twitch is off. I'm still echoing, right? Um, let me let me listen to my listen to my headphones here. Test, test, test. Yeah, Twitch is muted. That should turn down the game volume. That should turn down my own volume. Oh, why would this be? Play back in your mic. Oh, that, that worked. worked. Which, Which one? one? Test, test. test. Game, game, game volume. Am I good, good right now, guys? guys? I'm gonna turn on the game volume. Okay, that makes sense, sense but. but... I'm trying to figure, figure out why I'm echoing. echoing. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna, gonna keep, keep talking, talking and you guys. guys. It's about, about a 10, 10 seconds away, so, so everyone, everyone just, just have to tell me. me uh, if it's... it's... Yeah, yeah I, I, I have Twitch muted, muted, so, so that's, that's not the problem. problem. Um, I don't I know what, what else, else the issue would be. Because I have desktop recording on and my playback on. Hmm. So I can't, I can't figure, figure out how to get, get my, my, my face, face in front of me. Dang, Dang it. it. All right, so testing, testing, testing. Is this one echoing? So I'm being told that this sounds good right now. Can everyone hear me now? Saved, yes. Okay, cool. So we are going to get started now. Finally. Sorry, we're about four minutes behind. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, so this is, of course, Ashnir. I'll introduce myself again, just so that we can uh, get a good video to save off later. So I'm Jacob Lichty. I'm the designer on Ashnir. Um, and so today, we're going to be playing Ashnir, answering a whole bunch of questions about the game, 
um, answering questions about our roadmap, uh, what you can expect to see in the early access version of the game, and what you can expect to um, see from there on out. So ask questions about roadmap, um, and in particular, I'll be happy to answer lots of questions about the design of the game, which things are going to be making it into the build, and we'll play along and play along the game and <clears throat> go through some of the features, and you can see see for yourself. Um, I'm just going to check real quick that everything's good, and then we'll jump into the game. All right, yeah, we're good to go. Um, yeah, so ask, ask lots of questions in the in the chat there. I'll I'll be watching those, and I also got my some of my teammates feeding me. Uh, other questions as well. And I'm actually going to start in the daytime here by cheating. And there we go. Alright, so we're going to jump on in. Um, so yeah, so th this is, this is of course Ashenir. So um, you'll, you'll be seeing some of the tutorial stuff that I've been adding in uh, over the past like month or so. Um, And uh, yeah, so we just started on a <clears throat> this uh, Terran planet, and this is all completely procedural. Um, so every time people will play, they'll start on a on a brand new version of this Terran planet. So that's so kind of the way we've been doing procedural is that um, we have um, we have designed biomes, and those biomes are kind of pieced together into a procedural planet for every single different player um, and, and so, so what that means is that we we get to get to design the biomes and get to place everything kind of roughly how we want it and then uh, as everyone plays of course they just don't have a map uh, of where everything is uh, which kind of creates an experience that's a little bit more unique for every player um, I, I just noticed like one bug that uh, that actually shouldn't be too bad but we, so we're definitely in bug fixing phase right now um, so you'll see a little bit of bugs, but I think it's pretty solid right now. I think this is a pretty good build, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy what's going on. So yes, yeah, so start on this planet, and so first thing that most players will need to do is just collect a few resources. So I'll run around, and here's one. This is called Compound. Compound's a very, um, it's a very common resource. Um, it's useful for building lots of your basic items. And so I've, I've collected a piece there, and you can see it just shows up right in my backpack. Um, and I can actually, I'll actually be able to print things with that. But I'll, I'll cycle through. There's a few different recipes here. Some of these resources are much harder to find than others. Some of them you can craft or trade for. Um, but compound is, is pretty common, uh, as, as is a few other resources that are on the starting planet. And so you'll have to actually travel to some of these other planets up in the sky if you want to get all the resource types or get, get them in large quantities. But as you'll see, there's a, there's a few different ways you can get lots of different kinds of resources. So. Um, just so there's options for players. Um, I, should, I should be, it's hard to check questions back and forth at the same time, but um, what is this game about? That is a good question. Um, it's fundamentally an exploration and crafting game. Um, I, I, I like to think that we're one of the few aeros, like truly aerospace themed games. I think there's lots of sci-fi games out there, but we we really enjoyed having the, um, like a, themed more along the lines of like NASA and SpaceX than like uh, Star Wars or a, uh, or like a 2001 or, or whatever. Um, and so yeah, so I, I collected a little piece of resin there. <clears throat> As you can see, I went back to the base and uh, the way that base building works um, is that you'll need to start with a, 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 a base item to, just to get you going, but then off of that you can build using resources. Um, additional constructs and these will all be connected together and one of the things that we won't have for um, early access is, uh, is is the rails that you might have seen in a lot of the gifts of the game um, and I, I think in the future we'll have what we'll call an automation update um, along and we'll, we'll actually have a, as many themed updates as we can as we can get during the early access um, period but one of them will be definitely an automation update and that will that will reinclude a lot of the, the things that we've had to cut just to get to get ourselves out the door. So we're, for early access, we're definitely focusing on a tight, tight looped experience um, that anybody can play, and um, that has obviously as few bugs as possible and is, is, is well polished. Just a good like foundational experience for players before we start jumping into a lot of the planned features. But we definitely do want to get to all all the things that 
that we might have talked about. Um, yeah. So so as you see, I, I grabbed a couple of those, a couple more of those resins, and I, I'm going to build my first building here. Um, so let's just build our, our basic printer here. Um, and as you can see, there's there's no power, and I'll just have to figure out a way that I can get that powered. Uh, and one of the ways is I can build myself a little personal solar panel here with that compound that I uh, collected. And as you can see, that kind of popped up onto my backpack, and I can use that to power myself. Um, so, so normally, normally power just regenerates really, really slowly in, in the backpack, um, and so I built that solar panel that will regenerate faster, and then I can also use that solar panel to power other things. And so if I, I can grab that solar panel off of here, stick it on the front of of my new printer here. And of course it's nighttime, so I'll have to wait until it's daytime again for that to work. But in the meantime, I can go around grabbing a few other items. Uh, this is, we should probably update the art on this, but this is like a little spot where I can grab some, some power from the environment. Um, over here is an oxygen one. Yeah, so another another kind of uh, game that we are is a survival game. So you definitely have to keep yourself um, with enough oxygen at all times. I think eventually when we do another broader pass on survival, maybe with another update, we'll do add more survival characteristics, maybe even like food um, and definitely water will be things that the player will have to think about. Um, but the main survival characteristic right now is is oxygen. So you can see that just on the top of my backpack here. I've got an oxygen bar. Um, slide down the hill there. So I'll have to get, yeah, I'm running out of oxygen, so I'll just get back to base real quick. Um, and actually, so since it's nighttime, I, I'll just, I'm gonna put this solar panel back on here, but I'm gonna grab these power globules. I need to figure out a, a good, a better narrativization for what these little power things are. So I can power this up here that and I can cycle through there's a few different things I could build with my bigger printer now I think a lot of these aren't gonna be too useful right now for me oh I can actually get a seat started because I'll be able to use that later uh, and then I'll answer a few more questions here <laughs> okay why, why should I consider this after no man's sky I think the best answer to that question um, is just the fact that we're gonna be here talking to you guys throughout the whole process. Um, and a lot of that's like, we, I mean, we, we're all professional game developers like for pretty much all of our careers. Um, I was at 343 Industries, that's where a couple other people, we have some people from Disney and Ubisoft. And, um, and I think what we realized is that the best way to make the best possible game um, is, is to find out which, what we, the developers, don't know about how to make the best game, and that a lot of that comes from the fans. And so you, you could like assume if you're a AAA developer, like, oh, well, we'll just make the best, best thing and put it out there and everyone will love it, and we're not gonna talk about it. But if you really wanna make the best game, you have to, you have to get it out in the wild. You have to get it testing. You have to, um, you have to get feedback. Um, because you don't know the best thing for the games. Oftentimes, that's that's true of the fans. Um, so, in terms of why you should why you should consider this game, I mean, it weren't early access game. Uh, we hope that the game will be worth twenty dollars that you put into it. Um, that'll be the price for early access. Um, we have a, we have a big disclaimer that you'll see on the front the front page when you open up the game. That's like we are in development still. We will be in development for at least like a year afterwards. Um, and we hope that you kind of join along with us in that development. Because um, I think, in, in a, especially in a sandbox game, you just have to keep, you just have to keep um, improving the mechanics. Um, the mechanics don't improve themselves. A lot of them is you just have to see how people are playing them first. Um, yeah, so I've got this couple comp compound here. I'm just going to print myself a little seat. Uh, which this isn't going to be useful now, but I'm just kind of demonstrating how printing works here. But this will be useful later. Um, there's just a little crash spaceship over here, actually. Let me go grab, see what's inside over here. That'll be nice. So there's just a few resources in here. Actually, one of these resources is a, is a rare resource. So I can see what I can print with that, maybe. 
Um, I mentioned earlier that a lot of the resources you can only find on other planets, but there might be uh, they might be available in like smaller quantities, maybe in, in wrecks and spaceships, or you can also see that you can trade for them as well. Actually, I'm going to keep building up my base here. All right, and some more questions. Any reason you guys use the Unreal Engine instead of um, instead of Unity or other engines? Yeah, so actually, a while back, we actually made a prototype of the game in Unity. Uh, but we ended up switching to Unreal largely for... Unreal is definitely the more like production-ready kind of engine. Um, I think it definitely suited us better as like AAA developers. Um, it's a little bit more unwieldy. It's a little a little tricky to use at times, but um, I think overall it, just, it allows us to have a much more professional product, which is good. Um, and I think it, we definitely got like a graphical boost just because uh, it's a little bit more like physically based a lot of the stuff, and I, I think it's a great engine. Um, definitely professional, very professional engine. Oh yeah, so actually this this thing here is what we're calling the mineral cores. And they'll offer you like a little bit of resources um, and then it'll slowly regenerate over time as, as if the minerals are kind of constantly resurfacing. Uh, and design-wise, the reason I thought of those was that you know, like once you've kind of exhausted all the resources in an area, um, we, we definitely want to push the player out um, and force them to find other resources, but to like a small extent, um, if, if the players just haven't figured out how to um, how to get those resources, or maybe they accidentally wasted them all or something, they should have at least a little bit of a fallback that they can kind of come back to. And, and they, they regenerate very slowly, so um, so you kind of have to, uh, you at least have to wait a while. So like, I think that's kind of a theme that runs through the whole game is that like, there's sort of time punishments for not doing things perfectly, but if you're an experienced player, you can like burn through and find things very quickly. Um, I think that kind of, I've always been a fan of speed runs, so I think like a lot of uh, thinking kind of comes from there. Is that like I, I kind of expect that people will do things like, oh, let's race to research all the items in the game, or race to work through one of the bigger quests that we're that we're kind of planning on eventually putting in the game. Mm. Okay, so I've got another building option here. Um, actually, one thing that's really useful is obviously is the the research. Uh, station and what this will allow you to do is to discover new blueprints by finding researchable items in the world and I actually notice one over here that I'm gonna go grab um, so I'm gonna switch to slack real quick make sure I don't have anything um, yep yeah, so here's a, here's a research item that I found by this wreck thing uh, and I can bring this back to base What more questions? Will there be space stations eventually? Absolutely, and eventually is the key term there. Uh, no space stations, no access. I mean, you you can sort of send spaceships up into orbit, um, but there's not a lot you you can really do to interact with them well in orbit. But I think like it'd be really neat if I oh yeah, put the solar panel on the front here, charge that up. Um, yeah, there won't, for early access, there won't be much you can do with the spaceships in orbit, but. Um, like eventually, it'd be really neat if there was certain benefits that you'd get from putting things in orbit, and then that would be useful to send resources back and forth to those space stations. Maybe you can build massive solar panels that are easier to deploy in orbit, um, and which um, and so you can collect a whole bunch of power while in orbit, and then send resources up to the space station, maybe to get refined or something. And I think in the future, once we once we've done the automation update. There'll be a lot that you can do just to make these like, big resource production pipelines that go even all the way up into space and to other planets and between planets and and in space stations in orbit and then um, and everything you build here like from from some of these buildings to some even some of the stuff that you would put on a vehicle you'll be able to also put onto spaceships as well but not for early access um, and I think so I go back to the original question of why why should we trust you guys building this big old play procedural game and it's kind of for that reason I think there's this game could go a lot of really good directions. Um, I think that's that's kind of the feedback we get more than anything else is that just like the potential of this game uh, just seems really great. I think that the foundation of what we're building with everything's kind of in the world. Uh, it's very tactile. Like everything, you've got your little backpack here and you just, you just like see everything, everything interacting with. There's very few menus I think is a really, really encouraging and really um, promising way to make a game. Um, I guess I charge up my research station here, so I'm going to research this thing real quick. 
think we still need to get sound effects on this on the sucker, but um, research something. Condenser. So a condenser is one of these is a building. I need to get more resin somewhere. Yeah, so what is the end game? Um, for early access, there's not much of an end game. I mean, um, with sandbox games, it's sort of just whatever kind of goals that you make for yourself. Um, but that doesn't mean we're not going to put uh, like quests and little mini missions and and like pieces of narrative that will kind of add in over time. I think like Subnautica, if you played that game, um, kind of transitioned into that over time. Um, and I just need to drop some of these resources on, on here and store them for later. Oh, actually, with this lithium, I can build a battery. Let me do that real quick. And this battery obviously will uh, increase the storage capacity of power on my backpack here, which is useful. Uh, I can kind of venture a little bit further now and do a lot more digging without having to having to power myself back up, especially at night. That's kind of useful. I also don't really need this organic right now. Store this real quick. And let me just collect these. Build this base out a little bit. Uh, do this thing. I don't really need a condenser yet. A condenser is, is useful for um, collecting uh, moisture from the atmosphere, which can be converted into fuel, uh, into, into a hydrogen based fuel. But I don't really need that yet. Let's. Um, I was hoping I was going to get another item. Actually, let's build a vehicle base so that we can venture a little further and maybe find some more research items. So the vehicle bay. Uh, it's also going to need power. Let me go collect some more little power clusters from this thing. Um, let's see. What are the questions? What are the specs of my computer? Uh, this is like this is like sort of a middle of a road modern computer. You can, I think we built this for like a thousand bucks. I mean, it's it's definitely well above min spec. Um, I think we I think our min spec ended up being, ended up being pretty pretty good for the kind of game that we're making, fully procedural and all that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just grabbing these power things, powering up my vehicle bay here. Rover. That will be very useful. I need to grab these compounds. I don't use them in that thing anymore. Um, so there is a big chance that if you release for EA and the fans hate it, how will you change it? Well, we'll definitely have to do some soul searching if that is the case. Um, and by soul searching, I mean really figuring out and listening to people um, as to why they dislike the game, slash hate it, slash would rather do anything else besides play it. Um, and yeah, I mean, if I think any game can be salvaged, right? Um, I think a lot of the hard parts of starting a game development is just like getting it out the door. Um, as you can see, I'm flattening some of these, some of this part around the base because uh, so I just I can drive off this thing later. Um, yeah, I mean, getting a game out the door and getting it just like functionally working uh, with the technology and with with um, just with building up a community, like some of those are the, really the hard parts. I mean, making a game that is fun, that people like, uh, is very difficult, but I mean, once you've already got a game out there, as long as you're humble as developers and know how to take feedback, um, you can you can pretty much salvage anything, I think. Um, it just takes, it just might take a lot of time, which um, is not what a lot of people want to do as developers, but I mean, I mean, look at look at some games. You, they they came out originally, and they were pretty pretty limited. Um, and then just over, I mean, Minecraft when it first came out was a very limited game. Um, there was I mean, there was just like very little you could actually do in the very first version of Minecraft. But I mean, just I mean, it took them like ten years or something. But um, eventually, eventually they just keep keep refining it, keep like paying attention. And I think that I think the the key is just to be very unassuming as developers, like. Don't don't think that you just have to put out this thing that everybody likes the first time. Um, that's just not guaranteed to happen. Um, you kind of just want to work with the community and just like not overpromise and 
and eventually, yeah. yeah so I'm just trying to get um, trying to get this rover powered up because I won't it won't work without it. But again, it's nighttime. I think um, there's some other. If I look at my backpack here, there's a few other things I could build a little more useful useful in the nighttime for getting power. So there's this wind vane. So it's a little windy right now, so that would actually work. But I don't have any aluminum. And it looks like there's a giant storm coming. Uh, so <laughs> it might it might not be heading directly at me. But even so, I'm going to just burn. Yeah, it's, it's going to hit me. So I'm just going to I'm going to burrow underneath here. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't blow my rover away. Build some, uh, build some tethers real quick, just so I can stay powered underground. Just weather out the storm. If you, if you want down here, I can see if there's any caves or anything that have some more, maybe some more rare resources. Um, more questions. How dangerous are the dust storms, etc.? So the, the one that's coming at me, I believe, is capable of killing me. It, it, it'll like, blow some rocks around, and if those hit you in the face, then that'll, that'll kill you. Um, but the hazards range in how dangerous they are, depending on the planet type. So this is meant to be an easy planet, so it's, this is a pretty easy out. I just kind of dig myself a hole in the ground and wait for it to blow over. What's the server plan for multiplayer? Will you be offering a Minecraft style dedicated server install? Um, not 100% on this for EA. Um, it should be relatively easy to set up a dedicated server. I don't, I don't know if we've announced anything for um, for like a, a standard way to do it. But I mean, d dedicated servers will definitely be a thing. I don't know about on day one. Um, but so the, the day one model will be you just join up with your friend. You just right click on their username, either in, on Xbox or on Steam. Um, and you can just join right into their game. Um, and so somebody's the host, somebody's the w one to three other people are the client, so up to four player co-op. Um, looks like this is ready to go. And you can play with three other of your friends. This rover here. And this would be useful for, as I mentioned, I was trying to find more things to research. So let's see if we can just run around the world and find, uh, Big wreck over here. Let's see if we can go there. And so the way I've set up the research actually is that um, once you've once you've already found one item like this item which I've researched before, um, it'll just give you a less valuable item if you research it again. Um, and so you research it once, you you learn something, you get a new you get to build a new item, uh, you get a new blueprint for a new item that you can print. Um, if you research it again. You still get a reward, but it's sort of a lesser reward, but it should still be useful. Let's, let's just see what we get by this thing. I'm going to rover driving more. It's a little floppy. More questions. Okay. Um, a lot of other gameplay you've showed makes, makes it uh, seem very quick to make progress. Um, this seems a bit slower, which is which I think is a good thing. Are you playing slower, or, or are the other showcase made easier? Yeah, the other ones were definitely made easier. Um, like when you're showing on a show floor, like, and you're trying to get someone to play in 20 minutes, uh, which we've, we've already been going for about 25 minutes now, um, you, you definitely need to speed it up a bit. Uh, more lithium, whatever. Just save that later. Um, yeah, and so I, I think as, as time has gone on, we've sped up the game a bit. And so like, and even when we've been doing beta testing, um, it's you, you almost just want people to play the whole game um, versus like play the whole game at the pace that is eventually going to be because you want to get a lot of test coverage. Um, so you want people to play the game. You want to get their feedback on all the stuff that that you can do in the game before like you go back and just tune all the knobs. And so tuning the knobs is easy. You can just go back and be like, oh, there's half as much of this resource on this planet now. Um, but a lot of times, like tuning the mechanics and uh, getting it all working for the first time is actually a little difficult. So, yeah. 
Is there going to be any character customization in the game? I'd like to run around with a top hat. Uh, Kappa. Um, I, eventually, yes. Uh, you'll you'll see as as even as we get to early access, you'll see a little, a little, you'll see us hinting at that. Um, at character customization. Um, but I think like in the future, yeah, if we if we eventually do something like hats, I think we'll have our own version of like hats. Uh, we're not going to try to rip people off with them, but um, uh, I think another seat here. I can put this on the back if I had a buddy. Um, yeah, so I, we'll definitely have our version of hats. I think like having different suits and having different ways that you can um, customize it works really well in our game because since we're a third-person game, you can always see your suit when you're running around. So it's kind of rewarding to, especially if you have to work for it. Like if you have to find a bunch of resources or complete a quest or something to to find a unique item that that like proves that hey I did this quest and I'm really good at this game and then when you meet other people in the real world uh, they can just immediately see it because since the, your character is just right there um, so I think that'll work really well for us uh, so let me find more research items there should be some, um, some organic and oh yeah okay, this is one over here So, uh, our artist Adam has made a bunch of these. Oh boy, cave there. I could totally go around this, but I'm just going to do something for the fun of it, which is I'm going to hop out and build myself a bridge for my rover. And so I, I can switch it to add mode, and I can just do this, and then I can just flatten like this with another mode. Rover. Is it possible to make a huge hole through the planet? It is totally possible to do that. Uh, it'll take you a long time. You'll have to keep oxygen up the whole time that you're doing that. Um, and it's also going to require a lot of power. So if you're underground, oxygen and power tend to be in short supply. So you might have to like be clever in, in how you do it. So like one way would be to kind of set up a base near the, the giant hole that you're building um, and put some solar panels there and hope it stays daytime as you go underground and tether down and have the tethers provide you power and oxygen while you're digging that massive hole. So it, it's tricky. Um, but it's not, it's not tricky from a technical standpoint. I mean, the, our, the tech that we have totally allows you to dig all the way to the core of the planet, through the planet, make giant tunnels, roads. The entire planet is fully deformable. Oh yeah, so you probably noticed uh, this research item that I found on that fixture over there. Dug up, stick it on here. Do some research. Are there any structures that don't attach to the main st structure for early access? Um, if if by that you mean these buildings, um, so yeah, for early access you can't rip these buildings off. Um, but one of the items in the game is a crane, um, and with that crane you'll be able to pick up. Uh, I, I, let's hope I hope we get this get to this where you can pick up some of the buildings and actually s slap them onto larger rovers because um, it is meant to be a very modular game so there's these medium items here like these the seats and everything that you can print with this printer here solar panel storage wind battery generator and then a bunch of other items that we still haven't researched yet oh shoot i didn't see what what it said we researched um because i wasn't paying attention but let's just see if, if i go here Go for another building. Actually, we're kind of running out of room here. I, I should probably uh, probably make another make another conduit. Um, but yeah, it's it's meant to be a very modular game. So I mean, if you think think like Minecraft, where where you're doing that little grid arrangement game of uh, of like putting this resource here and this this resource on like the bottom part, and that makes a that makes a wooden pickaxe. Um, um, ours, ours is ours is more atomic than that. So like the seat always costs the same resources. But if I put that seat on the back of a rover with a battery or, or with um, or with like a winch, uh, then I've just made a a different kind of vehicle that I that I kind of designed myself, um, which I think is pretty neat. Um, more resin. And uh, yeah, so I think like. 
I, I find myself having to get a lot of resources here, but um, especially when we have the automation update, clever players will be able to find ways to very quickly gather large amounts of resources, um, either by setting up these like automated digging stations that kind of ferry resources back to their base. And uh, oh, so, someone tells me it was a trading platform research. Uh, that's that's good. I like that thing. Um, so this, is a, this is the trading platform, which is a very useful early game thing if you can research it. Uh, and so what we can do here, we can actually look through all the resources that that we've that we know about and trade for them. Um, and one thing that I definitely know I want is aluminum, because aluminum will let me make a wind vane which will make it easier to survive at night. So I'm just going to throw some of this stuff that I don't know I don't need. Um, oh wait, where did I find this aluminum? Oh, I think I found it on another spaceship, mm -hmm. didn't I? Okay, let's get some copper then. Um, uh, let's put some water on there. Uh, it's still yielding zero. Let's grab some of these other resources. I've got an extra lithium that I don't need. Lithium's pretty, lithium's pretty valuable. Cool, and with that, that's enough to trade for an aluminum, so I'm gonna send this trading ship away. <laughs> there it goes. We still need to add effects and sound effects to that, but all in good time. Um, will there be any upgrading of different structures in EA? Turn that little pod into a larger one. Um, I assume you mean like this pod. Um, I think all of our upgrading is kind of, kind of like I mentioned, uh, modular in that like if you want a better version of something you might have to find the rare resource of it and build the better version of it and then snap that on instead i think like especially for bases it'll kind of work like that where uh if there are like interiors that we end up adding as um as uh as like places you can actually roam around in and like keep your trophies and stuff um you'll be able to like build those out um in terms of upgrades, um, I consider just like having it be that okay. Well, if I build a solar panel, maybe I can like find some oh geez, find some upgrade thing, or maybe I can build an up upgrade station that like takes items and requires more resources. That's, that, actually, that's probably the best way to do it. Is that like if I've got existing? Actually, let's just see what happens. If, uh, maybe this is. I think there's different like tiers of sandstorms, so this one might not actually have rocks that's thrown at me. shows a base being destroyed by the storm. Possible in the EA. Uh, the bases don't get destroyed in early access. I think like I think like different tiers of them should be able to do that uh, once we do the work. Um, maybe they could like actually bury them in dirt um, or just directly damage them and then like you would have to take and like build these walls around your base. Um, to like keep them safe or like build like wind barriers or something. There's like more items that you can kind of build. I think that would be a good idea. Um, Oh yeah, but I've got this new stuff that I can build. Uh, let's build let's build this generator with this copper that we traded for. And a generator is useful because um, I can take these organics that I've been collecting and I can turn them on there, and that actually powers me up. Um, and so that's also that's another way you can stay powered during the night. So actually, let's let's build a spaceship if we can. Shuttle. Lots of compound. I'll need for that. Actually, maybe I'm gonna change change that to be not compound, but we'll see. Um, uh, so actually, one way I can get all that compound, I can just trade for it. Where's my trading thing? So again, 
this lithium's pretty nice. Um, I can get four compounds by just turning that lithium. That'd be great. Um, I assume the gun both lowers and raises the ground. Yeah, so I think it should be forward. You can do that. Um, will there be any? I don't know. Um, how are you going to get around the issue No Man's Sky had of lack of direction, plenty of content, but no goal? Um, I think by doing the opposite, maybe. Um, the uh, I think we there's so many things that we wanted to put in early access, and a lot of the things are things that I mentioned. But like, it's probably better to make sure that the stuff you does that you do put in the game is is good before you start just throwing stuff in because I mean like I mentioned we'll be in our access for at least a little bit and and so I mean I, I I've had to I've had to tell people no on the team a lot which always sucks but like like if if you if what you put in is is like the correct thing then it will be correct forever but if you put in the wrong thing that just that's just that's just wasted time that like you have to delete that later fix it up and a lot of games just never get to that because they they've shipped the game um, and they just have like no incentive to really make it better. Um, but I think some games have like shipped very non-assuming releases and then been out for some time and um, and they just keep making the thing better. I think Subnautica is a great example of this. Um, um, and like the, the the original release needs to be great, it needs to be solid, it needs to like just work. Um, it needs to be fun, but it doesn't need to like have tons and tons of content. Because you can always add content. Um, if if you have bad like user experience and like the fundamentals of the game are not solid, then that's that's broken forever. Look at this thing. Um, dig up something around here. Hmm. Will there be upgrades to make things faster, in including the? Uh, the form tool. Um, I think so. There's you can't upgrade your form tool in early access, uh, at least in day one. But I think that's that's definitely something that would work well. Maybe, maybe it's kind of like I mentioned, like oh, I stick my form tool on this upgrade table and I have to go find this like super rare resource that is only on this planet that's like right by the sun and it's easy to die there. Um, so like go out and find the thing that allows you to upgrade it. And, like, work for it. Be clever to get there, um, and then yeah, you could like upgrade, upgrade your form tool. Maybe you can, maybe it digs faster, requires less power. Uh, I think we always want people to be, always want players to be um, working ever, ever more, ever further into the game, like ever faster. So like, um, once you've like conquered a certain part of the game, you don't want to be bogged down by having to do the same tedious thing over and over again. Like, eventually, even like. You never have to sit there and just like and dig for compound anymore. There's you just you've just set built up this base that just like does it for you. Um, I think like as as we go on, I think we want a more like physical sandbox in the game. Um, one that's a little bit more like interactive and um, even like random. I think random's a, a good trait. Actually, I, I forgot to see what I researched again. Um, uh, all we got was a beacon. Uh, beacons are lame. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, but I'll, I'll, sh I'll show it to you anyway. They're not lame. They're great. Everything in the game is great. Um, they are actually useful. Um, one, especially if you go, if you go and travel more. So I'll, I'll I'll do like a an actual case of where I would be. Let's see if we can find another research thing while I'm at it. Like I mentioned, the rover's still a little topsy-turvy. As you can see, when I fall out here. Oh, jeez. Stuck on the ground. <laughs> Flip it over. Any plans on adding water oceans? That sounds really hard, okay? That would be very difficult. Uh, I mean, you could do the thing where it's like, oh, everything below... Everything below this... Uh, this water line is water and everything above is allowed to be terrain. I think that's a lot of what a lot of games do. But like, man, if you want to do like fully simulating water that you can like swim in and like build boats, boats would be amazing. Boats in this game would be awesome. Um, but like doing that physically is very difficult. I 
just as like a technical challenge. Um, that would be awesome. Though. It's like, it, and I think that's what's what's neat is like, in, there's lots of different contexts in this game. There's there's like there's like safe planets, there's dangerous planets, there's windy planets, there's, there's space, there's space stations. Eventually, there's like boats and all those kinds of stuff. And like everything you build, from like seats to solar panels to everything, you can use those anywhere. So it's like. Let's say I build this boat and it's got like this wind turbine on it and I can just go off in the middle of the ocean and just like let it, maybe it's super windy in the ocean, I don't know, but I can, I can go collect a bunch of power there. Um, and, if, and if there's water, you can like use that water and like production pipelines that also need to be powered. Um, power again, okay, actually so what we can do here. Stick our generator on the front of that, get that thing powered up. Oh, and it's gonna be daytime soon. So it'll actually power up nice, about double as fast. Actually what we can do, Let's build a big solar panel uh, after I maybe trade some more compound here. The sands weren't coming. I need to make those a little bit less regular, maybe. Uh, maybe it's fine. So I, this is this is a recent addition where I've I've kind of put these um, down a little bit, just kind of like fall and kill myself. I guess I could just let myself actually die. I mean, I obviously I've played this game a few hours, so I know how to not get myself killed. But it'd be cool to show actually what death is like. Oh, geez, what is this? Have I never seen this before? I think Adam's been putting in new stuff that I've never seen. Uh, geez. Yeah, so there's a research item here, but I think also like it'd be cool if whatever 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 this is, like if you could also bring these bigger things back and like grind them down for resources or something, I think that'd be neat. Oh yeah, so I was talking about these little power flex. It's so, like when if you go deep into a cave, like you can sort of hope that there's like these things to keep you powered and there's like oxygen you can find, but it's not oh geez, that thing's scary. Um actually let's just see what see what happens. Collect some of these power things. Oh geez. That thing, that thing was dangerous. Um, where was they even at? Oh, there's, there's my corpse. Okay, well, I don't think I had too much valuable, too much valuable on my backpack. But uh, <laughs> let's just let's go back and collect my stuff. There might still be a bug with that. Let's let's find out. Um, I'm just like, looking at the chat here. You guys are, you guys are great. Um, I don't know how many oxygen do I? Uh, hopefully, I don't die trying to get to where I died. That would be ironic. Let's get see if I can get this oxygen source here. Oh man. Alright, I guess I can just uh, get this one dry and actually collect some more. Oh, no power though. Do I have power anywhere? Yeah, I need power? I need a power, right? Yeah. Get some more power here. Get this thing fully in. Oh, not quite enough. Alright, and then where did, the, where did that thing. Where's my corpse? Is it, was it maybe this one? Let's find out. 
Oh, I can slide down. That's cool. Come around here. Oh, yeah. Slide all the way in here while I'm at it. Get those. Now, where, where did I die? Ah, oh, man. See, okay, yeah, this is what beacons are for. <laughs> I made fun of those earlier, but, like, when I went down in that cave, I should have, what I should have done is built myself a beacon. And then, uh, and then mark the entrance. Because caves are often dangerous. And so, I'm gonna run out of oxygen. So if I were to collect this compound here, build this beacon, I'll just, oh, I love these things. This is the one I already, already used. Let me go see if I can get to this one in time. Yeah, so I, this is an example of like how I tried to do the level design. Is that like, well, if I go off into this area that I've never gone before, I can get some oxygen out of these things. But then if I come back later, like, they're already depleted. But then, so it kind of forces you to like build up an area to be more broken, isn't it? Oh well, it should be giving me. Oh, it did give me oxygen. Okay. Oh, it is giving me. Okay, cool. That's not a bug. I'm like hyper hypersensitive to what might be bugs, but I think that was working correctly. Um, right, so this this beacon, if I were to put this here, <laughs> then I would know how to find my... Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, so it's under there somewhere. Um, I think I'm gonna run out of oxygen again. I want to build another rover. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. Um, dig straight down here. Maybe it's around here. I don't know. Ah, no power. Ah. Yeah. See, if I was good at this game, which I'm not, I would have done that better. Oh well. I'm gonna die again. Let's just uh, let's just abandon abandon my corpse to rot. And uh, yep. I'm just gonna accept my death. Oh well. Any, let's see if there's any more questions to answer while I die here. The ground is obviously different colors, um, but do different colors actually mean anything? Like, is gra green classified as grass and gray as stone? They don't matter too much right now because you can't actually collect the dirt right now. Um, but I think later on, um, I've got the spaceship here. Did I ever get another seat? Okay, let's build another seat. Uh, later on. Um, when you can click the, the dirt and you're trying to build. So I think some people will actually want to be really creative with the game, um, like where they're building sculptures. And if you can build, if you can get any color of dirt to build those sculptures, then you can build anything. Uh, I've never had the patience to sit there and like sculpt something massive and I'm also not much of an artist. Um, and, but if you can find the resources to, uh, or sorry, find the dirt that's the right color for the thing that you're trying to make. You might have to like go to another planet and bring like huge storage racks um, to bring to bring all that dirt back to to your home planet. So like, let's say I'm trying to build a giant um, sculpture of certain presidential candidates. Uh, I might need to go to an orange planet um, and bring back huge amounts of dirt. Um, to bring to go finish my sculpture back home. Um, uh, okay, this needs compound. Okay, yeah. So, this vehicle printer can actually print uh, any any of the items onto these these uh, ships here. And actually, when I get build, you can build these bigger spaceships that can build like even bigger storage racks. But they all just like print directly on them using this crane here. I need to do a little more updates on this thing. Okay, cool. So I've got a spaceship and a seat, so that means I can totally fly somewhere. Let's get a, um, let's build a couple more things. Okay, I, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm lazy. I'm just going to cheat real quick. This will not be an EA. You cannot use this menu. This is only for me. I guess I could have traded for some, but whatever. Um, uh, let's get a storage mm -hmm. rack bring with me. <laughs> um, 
Let <laughs> me answer some more questions. Uh, oh, wait, I, did I never research this thing? I never did. Why did I never do that? Oh, well. Um, okay, I can, so I can slap the storage rack on here. And, uh, oh, I need need fuel. I, th I think I, I did this kind of incorrectly. I need to, uh, right, right now I have it so that you mine water, or you can find water in the world, um, and you can use that to turn into fuel, and the spaceship just automatically converts into fuel, but I don't think that's clear. I think I might change that, but for now, that's how it works. Uh, let's trade for some water. Oh, actually, let's see what's in this research thing. Nope, research thing. Collect some of these plants. Smelter. Ooh, that's useful. Um, what was I gonna do? I need fuel. Um, okay, let's see what I can get for water. Only one. Um, cool. Two water for that. Um, can you drill a hole all the way through the planet? Um, I think I mentioned this before. The answer is totally you can. Um, the What's interesting actually about that though is that as you get closer to the center of the planet, um, what happens in, and this happens in real life, um, assuming you don't die from the heat inside the planet. Um, there we are. That was some Elon Musk stuff right there. Um, Elon Musk, if you're watching this, please play our game. Um, uh, yeah, so what happens in real planets is actually that um, the gravity falls off linearly um, from the surface to the center. So if you... Oh, wait, I need to put fuel in this thing. Put some water there, converts into fuel. Um, thing. Oh, we'll get that fixed, I guess. Um, yeah, so as you're digging through a planet, I'll just talk about this as we go through space here. Um, the Yeah, the gravity falls off, so if you're halfway in the halfway between the center and the outside of the planet, you'll have half the gravity, and that's actually true in our game as well. Um, Alright, so I can go to the, the planet view here. And what's interesting is, so I, I think I need to make this, make this range a little bit bigger, but what happens is that... Um, uh, I mean, these, these planets are actually simulating around the sun here. And so, and there's a limited range on my spaceship. So actually, like, if, if, you're, if you're not paying attention and you want to get back home, if, after you've gone to another planet, the, your home might be on the, on the other side of the sun, uh, however many years later, uh, game years later. Um, so right now, actually, there's not, not a few, very many planets. Actually, what, what I can do here, because I'm also I'm still a cheater, is that I can speed up the simulation a little bit here. So you can see how actually how these simulate here, and so obviously the distances between these plants are not realistic. Uh, I might might move them out though just to be a little bit more. But but the orbits are actually working as they would. So like the, the relative speeds of each of the planets relative to their distance from the sun is is physical. Uh, I've got this moon going around this one. That's all physical. Yeah, and these fully simulate. And yeah, I've got my my, my own my own uh, spaceship going around this planet. Again, the distances are a little weird. I'm like almost hitting the moon, but but yeah, I think like we've tried to ride this line between like what works for game design and what works physically. Um, and like finding finding one that like doesn't directly lie to young uh, impressionable souls about how science works, but still allows the game to be fun is is about what we're trying to be. So let, let me just uh, let me speed up a little bit more. Let me I'll wait for this this planet to come into range. Uh, like I said, I think I want to make the range of the spaceship a little bit bigger because it's a little just like awkwardly on the edge here. But this is the arid planet. Let me, um, let me fly to this one. Oh boy! <laughs> Some of the things I still need to fix up as well. Uh, it's just a little rough. 
not exactly that's not exactly how an orbit transfer would work, is it? Uh, more work. But yeah, so now I'm at this planet here. This is the arid planet. I don't know why it's blue. It makes me look orange. <laughs> Somebody asked an amazing question, which is, uh, uh, if you build a bridge to another planet, will they actually connect? Uh, so I mean. I mean, you, you, it, that's not just like, not possible. You have to, uh, oh, there's like these dangerous gas things. You have to, um, I mean, the planes are all simulating around the sun. And so like relative to each other, they're like, there's just no way you'd be able to make that dirt connect. Cause it's not, it's not like fixed in the sky relative to your own planet. So you, you wouldn't actually be able to do that. Um, would they stop spinning at different speeds? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that, nope, can't do that. Um, uh, right, so this is this is the arid planet, and so I, I'm probably going to expect not to find much water here, which is not good because you need water to produce fuel. Um, well, I might have put some water in the caves here, so I'll have to figure out how to do that. Um, there's this resin here, and this, oh, it's huge things of resin here, that's great. Um, yeah, so another pattern that we've kind of done is that like uh, often resources are rare, but every once in a while you'll you'll run across like a huge a huge set of resources um, of the same type, like what I found here. And so like it requires some exploration. Maybe you have to like get on get on a uh, get on a spaceship and fly around and build a rover on another planet and like roam the planet for a while before you can find these these big ones. Which also I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get myself back all the stuff that I lost when I died, but was too lazy to go get. So I'm gonna get myself a, uh, nope, nope, I'm gonna get myself a, uh, solar small. And what else do I want? Let's get a, let's get a generator, what do they even call that? I, things have horrible names. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, so it, it, you can find these these bigger sets of resources if you do some exploration. And once you found it, then you can just kind of keep going back. Maybe you need to build some, some a little bit of power, a few power things near the near the giant load of resources just to keep your tools powered while you're while you're gathering them. Uh, and this, here's something that's new. So I can actually build a base off of my spaceship here and start a new one. Um, So now I've got bases on both plants now. And I think in the future, the, the reason this is really neat is that, like, let's say I build another landing pad. Well, I guess this is a landing pad where this spaceship is. Um, you'll be able to, like, automatically send vehicles back and forth between planets. And especially, especially multiplayer, that's really neat because my friend can be playing on this planet. Uh, I can be playing on the other planet. And if we built these launch pads, we can... And my friend's like, oh, my gosh, I need so much... I need so much of... So much copper or something... And you're like, oh, I've got some copper on this planet, because there's lots of that over here. I can, uh, I can send those to you. I can just load them up on the, on the spaceship here, and then maybe there's some sort of interface where you can mark planets. Um, like maybe build like little tokens. Maybe that's actually what the beacon could be more useful for. Is like I build a beacon, and that like gives me a little token of like representing the launch pad. That I've built on the second planet, and I can send that. I can send this little waypoint back home, and give that to my friend so he can he can send uh, resources back. Yeah. So my one of my teammates is messaging me here. Uh, one of the questions: Are there any P0 and P1 bugs left? Also, what does P0 and P1 mean? So uh, a P0 bug is one that you we could not ship the game if this bug exists. Um, basically, it's. Uh, all the way to like this will affect a large number of, of people and that that's really bad um, uh, and these would be things like crashes that happen with decent frequency um, or all the time obviously that's going to be a, a p0 bug um, but it might even, even include crashes that are less frequent but still like affect people and like you just don't want to ship with one of those um, 
before, just like, I, I can't build a spaceship because something was broken, this resource doesn't exist. Like, none of the resources exist that let me build a spaceship. That's, that's really bad. I'll get buried. Um, so those would be P0 bugs. A P1 bug, the things that are that are more more affecting to the player than like a lower priority bug, um, but you could, we could like technically ship with them. The, I think the goal is to ship with no P0 and no P1 bugs. Um, my, my buddy Riley messaged me, we have currently a remaining nine P0 bugs, which means like we definitely want to fix all those before we ship, and um, 114 P1 bugs, which is a lot. Uh, I mean, if, I mean, if if each of those bugs takes like an hour to fix, even which is like that's that's that would be lucky if it only took that long. I think that's uh, we we should be able to get pretty much all those fixed, um, at least all the ones that are like on the on the high end of P1. Um, and P1 bugs would be like oh performance drops to like 15 frames a second on this part of this planet, or uh, actually that's probably, that's probably P2. P1 would be like performance is like really bad on this planet all the time. You can still play the game, but it's just not a good experience, and you wish it was faster. Oh, I, I totally skipped over something that happened here. Uh, this this titanium here, which is a very which is a rare resource, um, uh, is actually embedded in this really hard terrain. Uh, so I can get some of the flex off of it, which I think is I think that's I think I'll keep it not fix that, so you can get, at least get some titanium. But if you want all that titanium, you would have to build uh, machinery. Which actually does exist in early access um, to mine that titanium, and what that looks like is you need to build a crane and and piece together by building a drill bit and putting that on the crane, uh, and then using that to extract that titanium. Um, and actually, what I want is a trade platform because again, that would be always useful. But I want different resources, and so like this titanium. And it, I mean, this, this is like a gold mine. If I could, if I could mine that titanium, you can see like I can use that titanium and get eight of these less important resources back, which is which is pretty neat. Um, so I've got plenty of resin. Let's get um, let's get uh, where's the lithium? I can get two lithiums. Uh, is it, did I find any compound anywhere? Yeah, there's plenty of compound. Let me, let me trade for some lithium here. And a huge thing of compound here. I think some of these, I still need some tuning on some of the resources here, but, and, and it kind of depends, I think, like, for early access build, it's basically, we're just giving people the sandbox, they can, just to see what people do with the sandbox, um, and then we'll start adding in objectives over time, and so, like, like, an example of, of an objective would be, like, you come across this massive artifact, and it's, like, and you go up to it, and it's, like, beep, boop, boop, I'm an alien artifact, and and you don't really know what what it was sent there for, um, but it's for it to like, turn it on. It needs like a huge amount of power, like the power of like 50, 50 rovers um, to make it work. And then your objective, if you want to play that objective, is to um, I've got plenty of resources. Now, is to get that thing powered up. Um, and I think what's cool about that is that it just like immediately gives the player like. Like, it starts like turning, makes the player turn out, turn around some ideas in their head. Like, how how do I get that much power? Well, I guess I have to build all these things, all of these like batteries or all these like solar panels, and like put them out in this massive grid around the thing. Or maybe I can like find a super rare item that just like has all that power packed into it. Um, um, oh, actually, one of the ways you can do it is one of the the best ways to get power in the game is to build a, a generator. Not, not the one I have in my backpack, but a bigger one, and those actually burn coal, um, which might not be good for the planet, but I mean, it will let me power that that big uh, artifact up for sure. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I've got the smelter here. Let's build that. Um, I think. Oh yeah, here's some. Here's some aluminum ore, which uh, I think aluminum ore is pretty plentiful in the cave systems on the starting planet, but it's also kind of freely available on this planet here. Um, and I've got the smelter. So I can take this ore, stick it on here. No power. Uh, right. Uh, where's that generator? Um, 
more questions. <clears throat> if I'm the first person to dig out a planet until it's shaped like a donut, will you ship me a box of donuts? <laughs> um, I'm gonna say no. Sorry to disappoint. I just, I just mean, I mean like, I guess we could. That's totally not my arena. Uh, I'm going to like sign up somebody else on the team who's gonna hate me later to do that. But, but see, if we, if we send you donuts, then we'll send everyone donuts, and that's just like, uh, you know? Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay, let's smell these things now. I guess the sensor is not actually hitting me directly. trading away all this huge amount of compound that I found. Do water. Alright, let's get some more of that. Um <clears throat> I'm totally gonna build a bridge between planets purely because you said not to. Claims dubs Helix. Uh, I mean I'm interested to see anybody try anything in the game. Cause probably most of the things in the game that you can try we have not tried, which I think is pretty neat. Um, and you might run into, like, a bug, I would guess, if you do that. Oh, boy. For example, like, not being able to pick up this, uh, solar panel, or this storage rack off of this thing. That's not good. Um. Hmm. Yeah, so, there's a bug that I can't pull off the, so the storage rack, so I'm just gonna and give myself another uh, spaceship here. Yeah, so in case I haven't mentioned it enough, uh, this is this is still our very live. And we've got we've got we've got some more time left to fix a lot of these bugs, but you're seeing our live in development build. I, I didn't like do any work specifically to get this build ready for this. I just pulled our latest and started to play. And so you, yeah, so what you're seeing is very is pretty much how we see the game. Um, and I think that's that's something that's going to be true going to be very true throughout the whole development of the game. You'll you'll get a, a nice, a great window into the process of how this game is being made, because you're going to be building it sort of with us. Um, and I think I mentioned, like, this game has so much potential that, like, that's the way to do it. Um, we want to make the best possible game that we can, and I think the way to do that is just to involve everybody. Um, right, so this is, this, this one is how the spaceship should have been. I should have been able to pull off that storage rack, but... I'm gonna f see if I can fly this one back home. Um, how big are the worlds? So, the biggest ones, the planets themselves, are maybe, in like real terms, they're like eight, ten kilometers around, like relative to the size of the of the astron astroneer. Um, right, and uh, yeah, so like this one's maybe 10, 10 kilometers around. Maybe the the moon that was around the original planet was maybe like a kilometer around. Which obviously is way smaller than a real planet, but um, I mean, if we were to make it like, like actually, I mean, the real Earth is what like um, um, at least twenty thousand kilometers around. Um, if we were to make it that big, like we we can't make all the content to make that interesting. I mean, it's just kind of making the planet that big just to make it that big. It's not really doesn't really add anything to the gameplay. I mean, uh, again, I think if, as long as we're not like, lying to poor impressionable young our youth about plants are actually not actually not 10 kilometers or around they're actually 20,000 kilometers around this this game is not scientific uh i don't think that matters we're, we're trying to make a fun game that represents a lot of the concepts of of aerospace and gets people interested in it um i think that's what's important yeah so again what happened here is uh it's the wrong time of the year for me to get back home um, maybe that's like an upgrade. 
Actually, what I could do, I could I could planet hop to try to get closer. Uh, but even that's not going to help me here because I'm trying to. I think that's this one over here is where I'm trying to get. I think that's the Terran planet. No, oh, it's that one right there. That's where I'm trying to get to. Uh, if I speed up a little bit uh, or a lot of it. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna cheat. I'm just gonna cheat lots. Actually, if it was barely out of range, I could go to this planet here. How many midichlorians do I need to mine to build a Death Star? Um, I think canonically in the Star Wars universe, um, it would be four. Um, but we're not scientific, so it might be like a little more, a little less, depending on how much time we have left. Um, that's a good example of a of the kind of, of, of like how you design your science fiction in a game. Um, like you just tell everybody all the details right away, or you abstract it away. I think the mistake of the, of the infamous midichlorian line is that uh, is that they gave too many details about something that was already interesting, and obviously no, nobody cares how the force works. Well, they do, but like. They care about it up until you tell them how it works. Um, so that's 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 how you do good science fiction or bad science fiction. Um, it should, it should be water somewhere on this world, I would think. Maybe not. There's water on the moon and Mars. You can, oh, there's some. Okay. Well, I guess uh, there's an oxygen thing right here, so I can I can totally get there. Nope, that's that's titanium. All right. Well. <coughs> Oh, what was that? Bones, oh jeez. I didn't even know those were still here. I guess they maybe they're only on this planet. Uh oh boy. Oxygen. Uh over here. Um, seems like you can drive cars but not actually fly shuttles. Is that just temporary? Um for the most part, I think uh, the whole shuttle flying thing—it would be really difficult for a for like a first-time player to like get into a shuttle and like actually fly around with real mechanics. Like, um, I mean, it's not like anybody was like flying the um, the SpaceX rocket that like landed on that drone, right? Nobody was flying that. It was a computer. Um, but I mean, obviously, it's obviously it's fun to uh, to drive. To drive uh, spacecraft around, so like I think the way I've been describing it is that like in the early access build, every every vehicle gets a gets an autopilot. It just comes with an autopilot, uh, or every every spacecraft rather. Um, and uh, if you want to turn that autopilot off, uh, that that's going to be in an update after early access. Um, and maybe turning the autopilot off allows you to like. Just like hover over the face of the planet and get around on the planet very quickly. Maybe that requires a lot of fuel. Who knows? Um, um, but yeah, I mean, we want to leak. We want to keep leaking in more control over these vehicles as time goes on. Um, I think that would be that's definitely a good direction. Oh yeah. So I, so again, I've been mocking beacons this whole time, but this is actually a really good use for one. Is that okay? I've got this research item here, but I don't have enough room on my uh, on my spaceship here. To uh, oh, there's another one right here. Jeez. So I've got these research items here that I want to go bring back, but I don't uh, don't have room for them. But I put this beacon here. I'll be able to come back to it later. It's pretty low on fuel. Once I get back to my home base, um, I should be able to get more fuel luck a lot more easily. Okay, so you're also seeing a little bit of like frame rate hitching here, um, which is really bad right now. And that's that's kind of what I would classify as a as a P1. Oh, more fuel. I guess I can't. I don't, I don't have the fuel to go between plants right now. I can just pretend like it's the stream and not actually the game, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That was the frame rate issues you were seeing there is in the game. Um, it's like good right now. It's just like in some situations it gets a little, a little hitchy, but we are always working on that. Always working on that. Um, shoot, I need more water. 
All right, well, since I'm the designer of the game, I'm just gonna say that because of this experience, I think that there probably should be water on this moon. Um, because that would make sense that, like, you would have some way to get to between plants, so I'm just gonna cheat and get myself some water. Again. Because the assumption is that there will actually be water once I go back and add it. Can you get stuck in space? Um, yes. And so, like, this was an example of, like, even after I add water to this moon, still totally get stuck, but that doesn't mean that you can't work your way out of it if you're clever. Um, and so it's just like a trade-off, like if, if you want to give up and and give up trying to get home and uh, and like lose all your stuff, lose your spaceship, you can always just like let yourself die and then you'll maybe respawn. Um, the, the, the space company will send back, um, send you a replacement that is actually near your home base. Um, uh, but if you're if you want to be clever, maybe you can find some resources that you can burn into water. Um, there's actually a building you can build that I've researched but haven't built yet. Uh, that that oh, that condenses the atmosphere, like I mentioned, into, into water that you can use for fuel. Um, and so that, that's another way to get fuel. And, or you can go around looking for for wrecks that have fuel still in them, or just depends what the situation is. I think in most situations, like with enough time and effort you can get yourself out of this sticky situation. Um, and so I think that, that's what's cool about level design is that you, are, you want to provide people with a lot of different ways to do the different things because that, that just like lets them tell their own story, which is always cool. Um, is there going to be multiplayer chat? Would you need to build an, an antenna to use multiplayer chat? Um, there, we, we currently ha haven't actually included any explicit features for, um, so let's see. There's these different beacons here. I need to make these bigger so you can actually tell. But I think I think those are all my corpses, and this is this is my home base. Uh, but so we're on Steam and Xbox, so that just means you can just use the platform chat. And and obviously we can't prevent anybody from using the platform chat. So it's, it's not like we can ever say like like uh, you have to build an antenna to use this thing that we don't even control. We just can't do that. I mean, you always just have the ability. But I think. Um, and this is also post EA, but like if we if we do have servers where you can meet strangers, um, uh, you would have to craft stuff like that. And again, this is like well into next year where we add kind of some of these features. But uh, um, you would, yeah, you might have to craft something that broadcasts your signal out to help you find other other players. Um, and then once you've done that, you can like maybe cr figure out a way like to communicate where where they are like you can maybe send them that i talked about the waypoint tokens that maybe you can build with the beacons you can like send those send those to the player to like tell them where you are um, maybe there's like a mini game there that we can kind of come up with for how that could work but uh no promises as always but i think those, those are always good ideas all right yeah so my whole goal with here was like it's gonna bring these things back research a bunch more of them um and then Right, I built that beacon on the other planet, so that I could come back and uh, come back later and, and pick up this other research. So that's what, that's what I'm gonna do now. Oh, filters! Filters are the best. Uh, filters are relatively cheap to build. You just have to research them, of course. Um, but what they do, they allow you to reclaim the CO2 that you're generating into oxygen for a while. And so, if I have these in my backpack. Um, they'll just uh, keep giving me oxygen. It's, it's almost like it's almost like a really large tank that is not ref not refuelable or not re uh, you, can, you can't put oxygen into it, but you can just like essentially, I mean, with the level design, uh, it's basically a way to convert compound into oxygen. Uh, and then of course the theme thematically, it's it's these little little pieces that um, are get used up after they filtered so much CO2. Um, all right, yeah, so my goal was to um, trade for some more water. I've got this lithium here. Um, and, uh, yeah, lithium, lithium is pretty valuable. It looks like it gives me four water. Let's do that. All right. Um, can you make a bigger spaceship that can carry more items? You can. Actually, well, wow, that's trading. I need more resin. Yeah, so I think from here on out, I'm just gonna keep keep on cheating. 
and just so I can show more and more things of the game. Um, so I need some resin to show you what I'm about to show you. I think I might be able to get away without cheating too much of the research items, but let's, let's, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna build another uh, vehicle platform here. And this is gonna be for a big old spaceship that we're gonna build, which we're gonna have to research first. And I might not be able to research it just because it takes a lot of time to get to all the research items, even even with cheating. Um, all right, so other questions, there's an older one. So is this game intended to be a survival game, sandbox game, is there combat? The first two, absolutely. There is no, there is no player, player combat. It is a player versus environment game. Um, and when you do play with other players, you're playing cooperatively. And of course you can grief people, you can run into them with your rover um, and make them fall off a cliff and they die. Um, but there's no, we don't give you a tool to kill another player. That's not, that's not what kind of game we are. Um, if you want that kind of game, I can direct you to some very good ones, but we are not that. Um, all right, I was going to uh, the water came back, let me grab some of that. And get some of my spaceship. Get on in here. And we're gonna go back and forth, and oh, I've got lots of fuel, that's great. We're gonna go back and forth between here and the Baron and get those research items so that I can hopefully show you the bigger vehicles. Questions. You mentioned earlier changing the range of the shuttle. Maybe the amount of fuel it has determines the range. Um, that is too smart. Get out of here. No, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Uh, I don't be able to get to that. It's easier to change one number than it is to add a new feature like that. But. Death locations stay forever at the moment. They do currently. Um, maybe I can have them draw away. Or something. Oh yeah, so, so that looks like the symbol for the beacon that I put there. And so I know where that is. Let's go back here. Um, oh yeah, so <laughs> Red Riley's telling me, your, your body's still there, you might want to go on a mission to find it again. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so like, like I said, the corpse is still there somewhere. And maybe now that I've like built myself back up, it's like, oh yeah, because I've got filters now. That makes it a lot easier for me to go there without dying and find my old my old dead self. Um, wait a minute. Where did those things go? Wait, is this the place? Yeah, there's the beacon. <sighs> maybe they blew away. Maybe that's a bug. Hmm. But they are not there anymore. So there are, <laughs> there are storage racks. Oh yeah, I guess if I would have, and of course I could have done that if I would have done this. So if I would have, um, uh, if, if I would have built, again, I'm gonna keep cheating here. If I would have done this. Yeah, because I, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's sandstorms on this moon, but if there are and they were working properly, again, no guarantees, still lots of bugs, but you could just build a, um, Oh boy, there's this giant thing in the way. You could just build a uh, storage track to make sure that nothing blows away. And yeah, and again, I'm not sure whether that was a bug or whether it was like meant to blow away. But um, yeah, let's just let's get a oh, let's build a condenser. Um, I need to fix the animation still, but this thing uh, actually collects water from the environment. And so, is there any wind? Nope, no wind here. Uh, let's just build a big generator, or cheat and get a big generator. Generator medium. Um, I wonder if there's any coal. I think there's coal on this planet somewhere. Um, let's, let's build some more tethers so I can, or, or filter, or what's the tethers? Yeah, so you can kind of think of tethers as the way, tethers are the way that you can get like permanently turn up, up a piece of the world into a place that's safe to go to on foot. Um, you can kind of think of 
Um, there's another research item. I think this is one I've already found before, though, so that's useless. Um, tethers will ter permanently turn up a portion of the planet into somewhere that's safe to roam around, and filters are just like consumable and let you go anywhere. Uh, no coal. Hmm. Well, you know what we do in this situation is we cheat and get ourselves some coal. So now we got some coal. Alright, how many different things can you build in your base? Are there some specific minerals that can be found on certain planets? If a teammate dies, can you pick up their backpack? In the future, do you plan on having mod support or a Steam Workshop? So to most of those original questions about like level design and can you find your 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 buddy's corpse and take his stuff? Uh, all yes. So, so like I mentioned, there's, there's no coal that I can find on this planet. I think maybe coal would be sort of a thing that you'd find deeper, deeper in some of the planets, um, uh, or on the surface of like of of planets that are farther away. Coal is definitely not in in heavy supply at the beginning of the game or the planet that you start on, because uh, coal is actually like a more of like a middle to end game kind of resource where like. I mentioned before, maybe finding an artifact that requires a huge amount of power. And if you can find a spot that has a huge amount of coal, um, then you can like, easily power that up. Um, coal is like a, a very, probably the most, the highest energy way. And, and, and of course, this isn't the real Earth. Like on the real Earth, uh, global or climate change is an issue. But it's not an issue here um, because we are explorers and maybe it was actually too cold to begin with. Um, and of course, like this, it's complicated. Uh, yeah, so this will keep. Yeah, so um, you see a lot of these little power bars here. Some of them are bigger than others, and that's kind of to um, to make it so you have to work up to be able to power these things. So if I want if I want to get water really quickly out of the atmosphere, I have to be able to provide a lot of power. And like I said, coal is like kind of a, a middle game a middle game resource for that. Um, of course, I just totally cheated and stole stole coal from the cheat menu, but uh, but so I would normally have to go out and find that in the world, and it would it would ideally be I have, I've already got plenty of uh, plenty of fuel here. Um, let's see if I can find another research item. Oh, there's there's the one. Um, I guess I could let's. Another. Let's pretend like my earlier escapade actually. I think that's one I've seen before. You know, before too maybe. Let's pretend like my earlier escapade uh, was not a failure, and I have these couple of research items that I left here. <laughs> Missed. Yeah, my original plan was to take those back. So I'm gonna fly over there again. So far, it's fantastic tech, and I'm excited to see what you guys have come up with. Watching streams and reviews, I have a question. If, if the highest point of progression in Alpha or Beta is building a ship to get to another planet, why are the materials for it so easily available? Aren't you guys trying to make, make a game? What is the thought behind making it so easy and not, let's say... Yeah, so I mentioned maybe, maybe um, changing it from compound to another resource for the first spaceship that you build. I um, haven't quite decided yet. I think, like, there's definitely more you can do once you have reached other planets. I mean, like... By the first time you've, some resources are actually only available on other planets, so like you can't even play, you can't even play some of the mid game without visiting other planets. Um, I think it is worthwhile to get people flying between planets in the early to mid game. I, I think we've kind of dropped the idea that like, oh my gosh, the first time you fly to another planet, you just put the game down. Uh, because I mean, there's there's six unique planets here, like something like 50 biomes in total. So I mean, like if it was if it took forever to uh, even get to one planet, just, it would take forever to get to other planets. I think we just want people to actually start getting to play the. Uh, and again, a lot, a lot of this is just like opinion. Um, and and we'll just, just keep tuning it as we get people playing. If people are like, oh my gosh, it's too easy, then that's probably a good indication that it's too easy. And we can make it a little harder. Um, but we'll do our best. Alright, so let's research this thing again. And of course, I could have just built a research station on the other on the other planet, and so often that's like a trade-off. Like, obviously, it costs resources to build the research station, or I can just fly back and forth. If I had a huge, 
huge spaceships. Um, and I could, I think with a huge big spaceship, I can carry three of the research items. Um, it would definitely just be more efficient to fly and use an existing one. Research power cells. And I think actually with that, I'm going to do a cheat where I just get free research. Um, what was that called? Research token? Yeah. <clears throat> when I was in the NMS Hyperino, the No Man's Sky Hyperino, I always scoffed at people asking, what do you do? Um, but after I played, I got it. It's asking where the game is in the sandbox. Um, there's no danger of running out of fuel. Yes, yeah, so I think um, in some cases we've erred on the side of of actually making the game hard. I mean, you've, you've noticed a lot in a lot of these situations I've just totally cheated and I was like, I don't have this resource. I'm just gonna cheat and get this resource. It's just, I'm, just, I'm trying to show you the game here. Um, but obviously, in, if you're actually playing the game for real, um, You'll, you will find yourself stranded. And if that happens, that's just like your fault. And you should like learn from that. And I think that's that's like a, what's great about sandbox games is that they don't like hold your hand all the time. Um, if you get stuck, I mean, I, I could always just like start the whole game over and just keep playing like that if I got stuck somewhere. And I think that actually for, that would happen a lot of times to a lot of people. So you start start the game over, you've learned, you've got some knowledge about how to play the game. So the next time you play, obviously it'll be a lot, a lot more snappy. Um, oh yeah, so actually what happened was I just researched a truck I'm sick of these sandstorms. Uh, uh, you miss me. Um, I'm just going to so try to fix four of them. Let's just move around again. Um, yeah, so no danger of running out of fuel in this sense of this point since everything was available all the time. Yeah, yeah, the, I, I think when I played that game, it, I got the same impression. I think they, they definitely didn't want people to like, get stuck. I mean, they've got this whole game to play, and if you, if you get stuck in that game, you can't really start over. I mean, if you did, it would just take forever to get going again. Um, I think there's clever ways you can, you can figure that stuff out. Um, but you have to iterate, though. I and mean, that's, that's, that's what we're totally planning on doing, is just keep iterating until it kind of works a lot a lot better than it did when you shipped the game in the first place. Um, we have a lot of time. Tons of time. I mean, we've, we've, we've done internal betas already. Those had a huge impact on how the game plays. And then, of course, when we actually ship ship the game out into the wild, we'll get tons of feedback, and that'll be really useful. Oh, no, yeah. ah, dang it. Um, terrain gen is, is it marching cubes or triangulation? I don't know what you would mean by triangulation, but it is marching cubes. Let's see, I need some aluminum. Coal's pretty valuable. Or aluminum. Oh, can you zoom in on the player sound, like over the shoulder? I will do that. I probably should make it zoom a little further too, but the player, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, this is actually. I mean, you don't have to open your backpack to see what you've got. Like, once you understand what the resources look like, you can just see them right there, which I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, this is this is the dude. If you haven't seen the seen that up close before, uh, this is what he looks like. Whoop. Yeah. Do you plan on removing the code for the cheat window, or is it just a hotkey to access it? Um, yeah, so it's it's just an internal flag that when we when we make the builds, we just set it yes or no. Is this a is this a development build or is this like the real thing? And obviously, we'll turn that off for for shipping the game. So I've got this aluminum here that I traded for. Um, four of those. So we're gonna build this big big old vehicle here. And this thing this thing is this thing is amazing. I should change it from truck to tank, because that's, that's what it really is. Uh, more questions. Um, 
can you confirm you are not lying when we can see another player and we can actually see another player? Actually, I might I might ask uh, one of my guys to to jump in the the jump in the game at some point just so we can show off multiplayer real quick. Um, and yeah, it'll probably be Riley. So when I say the word Riley, I'll, I'll have you jump in. Maybe after we've played around with this truck a little bit. Um, oh yeah, so this is a truck. All right, I'm gonna get some more free research over here. Are you on Steam? Yes, this is the Steam build. So I'm playing with mouse and keyboard right now. And she can research these two things. Let's see what we get. A three seat. Oh, that's useful. And what else? A storage. Oh, that's that's the large storage rack. Okay, that's that's actually really useful too. Um, uh, let's see. Let's, let's cheat and get some more compounds. I don't think I don't think I've actually ever actually uh made a. Uh, one of these solar panels, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is obviously the, the bigger thing of the solar, the bigger version of the solar panel versus the one that I've got in my backpack here. This generates a little bit more power, a little quicker, so I can get this, uh, and print another thing on this, on this rover here, or this truck, if you will. Let this one charge up a bit. Um, oh right, somebody asked a question about mods, which I did not answer. That's, that's funny, seems the wrong art there. So I can build a small seat, three seat. That takes more copper, lots of copper. And I'm lazy, so I'm going to... I'm just going to give myself a bunch of titanium, because I can trade that for stuff. It's a super valuable resource. And then I can just use this titanium to trade for some copper. Um... Alright, so I've been informed that we have 20 minutes left. Alright, so that copper should come back in a sec. Uh, Alright, I was supposed to answer a question about mods. So with mods, that was not enough. Um, with mods, uh, there's no like, there's no planned explicit support for mods for EA. Um, obviously, people who do mods are extremely clever, and they can always find a way. It's unreal, so I think they won't have a huge, huge amount of trouble uh, getting some stuff going. Um, um, and then maybe, and this obviously no promises here. Uh, um, but explicit mod support, I think, would be a would be a good thing at some point. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of early access games in particular do it, and the reason that's useful is that you can just let other game developers or other hobbyists just make stuff, and then you you can get a lot of inspiration from that. You can even explicitly offer some of those things, and obviously you can use other people's mods as much as you want. Um, all right, I'm just gonna build a big storage thing on the back here after I charge that up. I really need to build a generator. Um, copper. Um, um, yeah, so actually my, my buddy won't be able to join this game. But I could just relaunch and we can just play play the beginning of the game real quick, and then we can end the end the stream together. Um, okay, what are the questions? Is the inventory limited to only the eight slots in the backpack? Yeah, so there's eight slots right here. Um, I think maybe like a bigger backpack, maybe up to like twelve or something, is possible. But it would start taking up too much of the screen, um, and could always, that could always be like an upgrade item or something you have to work towards. Uh, eight's a good number though, because Actually, what you'll see here is that um, if you want more storage on something to go on your missions, um, you'll just need to build storage. Um, um, yeah, I'm just going to get yourself a generator and then some coal. Charge this thing up. Um, 
And so, yeah, I, I'm going to build this this truck, actually, to be able to have lots of storage. Um, oh, yeah, I'll need to discharge this thing. Um, and so once when, once I do that, I'll be able to carry up to, I think, I think you can, with this one, there's going to be four slots on this. Um, let's see, storage. Oh, shoot. Why can't I build storage here? All right. Cheat again. Uh, storage. Large, we're looking for. There we go. Yeah, so so this this storage will let me carry lots of resources. Um, for example, if I have, um, and you you can you can just choose how you want to configure these yourself. Uh, I can put a storage, little storage racks on here. Oh, oh come on. And. That will be up to, let's see, how many resources is that total? Yeah, so this, this is all in response to the question of, like, well, you only have eight slots in your backpack, but if I build this thing, um, then I've got, oh, geez, I'm going to fall over. This thing is really heavy and unwieldy. Maybe you'd have to, like, build roads if you really wanted to use this. But, uh, let's see, how many is that? Oh, this back is stuck. Uh, how many is that? So that's 8 times 4, which is 32. Yeah, so I could actually carry 32 resources with this thing, which is pretty neat. Um, and, oh, right, so I was, somebody somebody told me, my, my, my teammate is screaming at me to show off trailers. Um, so what I can do here, I can build, oh, not that one, that one stinks. Um, build another one of these. Let's see, we can totally cheat here uh, and put whatever we want on this. So let's put a crane on the back of here and then maybe another storage. Uh, and of course, like if you're actually playing the game, you're gonna have to collect all the resources for this, which is gonna take you a while. Um, but you can also be clever in how you do that. And again, like once, once you've kind of built yourself up with more and more storage and that lets you carry more resources, which lets you build things faster once you move around faster. So I think that's that's kind of like a big part of the game is is the fact that uh, you can do all that. So what I'm going to show off here is the fact that when I do this, I connect these two together. Oh, man. Is it going to do too much? Oh, it's stuck on that little over there. So it's rock tape too. But you can get a lot of storage on this thing connect these together. So, I mean, if, if I were to put storage racks on on this thing, on, on back on there, I would be able to carry up to 64 resources at, at one time. Of course, like, it's, it's a little unwieldy, and, and, like, you'll have to plan ahead. But if you have, like, two bases of operations that are on two, two parts of the planet, and you want to transfer resources between those things really quickly, uh, and you've kind of built up to it, you maybe maybe flattened out some of the terrain, gotten rid, got rid of some of these rocks. Um, and you've got like the power for this rover here. Then you can totally do it. Or you could put actually three in a row here, but at some point, it's just using the physics system, so it's just a matter of, uh, a matter of uh, how much power it's got. Maybe that could be upgradable in the future, too. Um, yeah, if, I, if I wanted to take this thing up a mountain, holy smokes, I'd have to, like, like really dig. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be cool to eventually upgrade this thing. Actually, I, here's what it look, would look like if it was upgraded, which will not be available in EA. Uh, let's I'm gonna upgrade my tool, get, make it a little bigger. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, like, if I want to go up this mountain, up, let's see if I can get a better angle. No, not, not there. There we go. And again, this is, this is totally, like, a massively upgraded uh, tool here. And I think some of these would actually be, like, vehicle vehicle size items. Like, maybe there's a deform tool that's just, that you have to put on a vehicle to use like this, right? Um, so right now I, I just like cheated and made just made my small one nice, really powerful. 
Um, I don't think it's gonna have the power to to. Uh, oops, shoot. Probably have to un unhook this trailer if I want to get get it up. So that, that's a thing you can do. Uh, I think we're, so. We're running out of uh, running out of time here. Uh, I've got like ten minutes left. So I think what I'm, what I'm going to do, actually, one, one more thing I can quickly show off, uh, and then I'll I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reset the game and have Riley join me, and then we can end the stream there. Because uh, somebody's like, how do you know we're not lying to you that you can actually play this game with other people? And the answer is, you can play a game with other people. We are up to four player co-op. Um. Um, and I'll shut that off in a second. Yeah, so so here's here's a uh, this combination where I put the drill on this crane here, and because I built it this way, I can actually dig through the dirt. And I, if you were if you were watching the stream earlier, you saw that there was some hard terrain that I couldn't actually dig up with my regular tools. So this is how you would collect that, and then of course that would the resources you got there would collect on on the uh, on the rover here. And so actually, if I were to Add all the storage racks there, like up to, I think I said 32 you could fit on this thing. Uh, and I was going around collecting titanium with that um, on the other planet. And of course I had to build up to that. I had to like get this this giant crane built on this thing. I would somehow have to get that to another planet. Oh, a way you could do that if you if you work up to a uh, to this thing, this giant shuttle. You could put it, yeah, <laughs> you could. You could carry tons of resources back, so you, you could collect up to like 64 titanium and bring that back to you, your home base, and that, that titanium could trade for a whole bunch of resources, and that's how you would kind of build your way up to this without having to spend so much time collecting each and every little resin. So there's lots of ways you can get the different resources. Um, yeah, I think I've pretty much shown off everything that I want to show off unless, unless Riley yells at me for something else. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to boot up, uh, boot up Steam and he's gonna join me for just a quick show off of um, of uh, multiplayer. Um, and if so, I'm just booting up Steam real quick. Uh, please don't everybody friend me based on my. All right, so we're gonna play the main QA branch, which is the beta. Uh, which well, actually, you'll have to um, Riley. You'll have to do. You have to be on main QA. All right, somebody has another question uh, to to the team. Oh boy, it's this is, it's booting up on the other other screen here. Let me I'll have to move it over. There we go. Uh, if you could pick one unique selling point to set this game apart from other Minecraft S games, that's a good question. Um, I think. Um, I think what's cool about our game is that, so it's so besides the terrain deformation, which is which is pretty unique. Um, I mean, I, I guess you can you can dig in, in in regular voxel based games. Is that like the terrain deformation? You can make any any rounded shape that you want, uh, meaning that like if you're trying to build a racetrack for the vehicles that you built, um, you can actually smooth them off exactly how you want them. It doesn't have to be at these like awkward edges. Um, and and I think by the time that we've built it up to having more like physical fun items that you can interact with. Um, um, that that will make a really interesting sandbox. Um, oh, can't see my screen. Um, let me add. There we go. And I think this is gonna cover my face, but nobody nobody wants to see my face anyway. And after I after I join here, Riley's gonna join me in this game, and we're gonna show off uh, co-op for just a sec. <clears throat> Quick question: multi-monitor support. Um, 
I don't know about that. I mean, you can run it, you can run it uh, windowed, which might let you just make the screen massive like that. But I don't think, I don't think there's multi monitor support built in yet. Um, that's one of those things that we can pretty easily add, though. Um, again, we just have like so many tasks. If you were watching the stream earlier, you saw how many remaining bugs we have to do before we just have to ship, that we have to fix to ship the game. Um, so we're just focusing on the things that we have to get in and then, then there's plenty of time because we're an early access game to get in all the stuff that um, everybody wants. And so Riley should be joining me at some somewhat soon here. I think um, I think I just saw something that indicated that he's joining. Um, did you guys put in more any any thought into repelling uh, climbing rope idea? Um, that was one thing that we cut for EA. Uh, I think that's something we could add back in later, because um, I, I think like these, these, it was always these tethers, right? It was, uh, it was um, these tethers were kind of meant to be that. They, they're, they're like this all-purpose like well, in a sandstorm, they would keep you from flying away. Um, you could like put them on the side of a cliff, like let's say there's like a cliff here, um, and I put this tether right here, and then like maybe I could like rappel down the side of the cliff without like dying. I think that's something that we would still eventually add. Um, I think, like like anything, I think uh, what's uh, there's there's Riley. He just came down, so he should hop out real quick. Whoa, he stayed in the spaceship. <laughs> Why did that happen? Oh no! <laughs> Dang it! Um, uh, about repelling, yeah, I think like with. As with like a lot of other features, um, uh, it would be cool. Obviously, oh, he says he crashed. Oh boy. Um, uh, with the repelling thing, like, I I don't want to make it like another like feature that you have to learn. It would just be cool if like you're using something you've already built, like these tethers. And especially when we make updates, this would be nice. Is that like, you've already had these built tether networks that you've built up, and then like when we just add the feature. You just be like this little thing, you run off the side of the cliff, it'll automatically just like repel down. And that's like just something cool and extra that we can add eventually. So we're always gonna try to join again. And uh, I guess that, that, would, that would totally be, that would totally be, uh, we, we've shown off, we've shown multiplayer before. So, so you, know, we're not, you, you know we're not lying if, if we can't get this to work that, uh, that we've played it. If you look at, if you look at our YouTube, um, uh, the system error YouTube, which is actually where this video that we're filming now will show up. Um, there's a few videos of us playing multiplayer. Multiplayer, multiplayer is a good experience in this game. It, it works really well, especially just because like um, you can tr trade resources around. Like if someone's dying, you can bring them like a the lifeline. Um, I think, like, the game plays really well for that reason. All right, so he's back here. Yep, there we go. There we go. That's good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, so I mentioned griefing before. <laughs> digging digging with the deform tool is definitely something you can do. Oh, jeez. Uh, you can have, like, deform tool fights. Uh, but, like I mentioned earlier, there's no... I'm also gonna... Going to, uh... Um, cheat and uh, get ourselves some, uh... Some power here. Just so we can... Uh, get more... Yeah, so I've got this generator here, giving us power, so we can we can keep fighting with the form tools. Uh, oh, and I just crashed. This is what you see here. This is a crash like it's gonna be a call stack, and that that would be classified as a P zero. Uh, based on our bug terminology earlier, that's something that we can't, we will not ship the game with. Um, but like I said, you're watching a life build. Um, just I just pulled this down today. Um, actually, oh, I I know why I crashed. It's because uh, I think I'm using a slightly different version of the game than Riley is. Um, I just like like I said, I literally just cooked this today. But the one we have on Steam right now is just a little bit older. But um, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I think with that, it's been two hours. Um, we're going to go ahead and end the stream. Um, oh, geez, there's tons of people watching. Um, and let me make sure everything's all good here. Good to go. Yeah, and thanks, everyone, thanks for all your questions. Um, 
uh, just kind of round it off. We've so Ash Nero is coming out on uh, Steam Early Access and Game Preview. We're we're sh still shooting for December. Um, one of the realities of sh of shipping on console is that you have to get the game certified. Um, and so we're going through that process. Actually, just just right now, we pushed the button to get it certified for the first time on Xbox. And um, if that goes through, we'll we'll be able to ship in December, and we'll hopefully have a date for you in the near future. Um, the game will be twenty dollars on both platforms. I think we'll re maybe there'll be regional pricing or on on Steam um, and possibly Xbox. But uh, yeah, four player co op uh, survival sandbox game called Astroneer that you might have heard of. Um, and I think. Um, I think by by the time that uh, we finish it and get all out, get all the bugs fixed, uh, everyone will really love it. Um, and I hope you do. So with that, I will sign off. And uh, everyone, thanks for watching.